The Northeast has been beset with insurgency problems for many decades, with Assam more seriously affected since the early 80s. The secessionist activities, separatist movements and ethnic conflicts, coupled with the measures to counter them, had created a situation where the police had become a force alienated from the law-abiding people. Since its humble origins over a century ago, the Assam police has made great strides and today it is a well-organized and disciplined force with a long record of useful service behind it. The Assam police is slowly adjusting itself to the changing circumstances and is working towards the ideal of a police force of a welfare state whose efforts and service will be to serve the interest of the people and, unlike the past, is no longer an oppressive arm of an alien administration. The three important points which needed attention were curb the frustration of the non-urban communities caused by their sense of deprivation, to provide assurance and help to children traumatized by violence, and to prevent the exodus of the youth to the jungles due to unemployment and economic backwardness. Project Prahari The spine-chilling incident of the brutal killing of five innocent villagers by being branded witches in the latter part of the year 2000 in Thaigarguri village stirred the conscience of law-enforcing agencies and demonstrated their helplessness in preventing such happenings. These problems were accentuated by terrorist elements to their benefit due to inhospitable and socially isolated terrain which kept police at bay. The need was to have an approach to community policing which would hit at the root cause of the social malady so that the law enforcement agency could play a major role in preventing recurrence of such incidents. This is the birth of the initiative called Project Prahari, which is an acronym for People for Progress in the local language. Objectives of Project Prahari To ensure community participation, decision-making and management of community development to enhance empowerment, knowledge accessibility and capacity building of the villagers to fight against illiteracy, social malady and underdevelopment by infusing scientific knowledge and temper. To target at motivating the people for sustainable community development under locally available resources with the theme People for Progress. To transform community strength to developmental activities for prevention of social delinquency, to inspire healthy and cooperative police-public interface to build the bridge of friendship between law enforcement agencies and community members. We follow three, four criteria like this. One is the village has to be a socially uh, isolated one where there is no developmental activity, then number two is maybe it is suffering from social prejudices like witchcraft and other things. Then maybe it's a village where uh, the extremists you know, are ruling the roost or extremists having a, a big support base. Or maybe it's a crime infested area or communally sensitive places. These are the broad you know, criteria we follow when we select a village. The village should not be very far away from the police station so that you know, the local police can have a system of monitoring over the activities in that area. With the initial success at Kokrajhar, the project has spread to other villages after the Assam police declared it to be a state-level initiative. When we first interacted with the local villagers, we saw that there was an inherent will in them to develop themselves and to channelize their energy in a fruitful manner. 
what they wanted was some means, some agency, someone who can motivate them, bring them together and achieve results. So this was, uh, this was the opportunity which we grabbed and as a catalyst, uh, we police people, we interacted with them informally first so that ice is broken and later on formal, on very, on several formal occasions also. And uh, it was decided that uh, the activities which were already prevalent in the villages which we, they were familiar with, especially the ladies of the villages, they were taken first. We motivate them to uh, have a community management group. Community management group will have uh, most of the people of different sexes, but it will have a majority participation by the women. So uh, the community management group will sit and they will decide the action plan. And in the action plan, they take care of you know the, the, the desirables they want to have in next uh, in, in the future. And on the basis of the local availability of resources, they will chalk out the action plan. And on the basis of that action plan, police would act as a facilitator or you can say it's a change agent. Now, every police district under this project is selecting a village which is socially underprivileged. As crimes and terrorist violence, as a result of the acute poverty and social ignorance, have been affecting the daily policing in this part of land, such initiative has given immense potential to other public agencies to learn and adopt such system of community participation and decision making in solving day-to-day -day problems afflicting the lives of underdeveloped and backward communities. हमें महिला समिति महिला को सब एक कट्ठा होकर हम कपड़ा बनाते हैं और जिस महिला ने कपड़ा बनाने नहीं जानती थी वो भी कुछ कुछ आने लगा है और ऐसे ही हम कपड़ा बेचकर कुछ पैसे इनकम करते हैं और उस पैसे को हम बैंक में जमा करते हैं हमें पहले ऐसे एक कट्ठा होकर हमें कम करना नहीं आता था फिर हमको एक संगठन महिला समिति बना के दिए हैं और सात साल कपड़ा बनाने के लिए दिए हैं सूद किन्ने के लिए हमको पैसे भी दिए हैं और ऐसे ही बहुत कुछ हम लोगों को सहायता किया है पहले हमें पुलिस से बहुत डर लगते थे और पुलिस को देखने से हम सब भाग जाते थे लेकिन जब से प्रोजेक्ट प्रहरी हुए हैं ये संगठन हुए हैं तब से हम पुलिस को नहीं डरते हैं और पुलिस के सामने जाकर हम अच्छे से बात भी कर सकते हैं uh, the products which they have produced, uh, we have given them several places like Gohati for the to begin with in Assam. Gohati is one happening place in uh, northeast India. So there is a place Netfi Heart, like Delhi Heart in Delhi. There we have given them a, a stall. So each year these villagers they go there and sell their uh, products. Experts from Gujarat, say National Institute of Design, Ahmedabad, and other places are also coming and interacting with them so that better variety and better quality of cloth can be made and sold. So that way forward linkages are being maintained and several workshops have been uh, um, done in recent past. One was in Bhopal and another was in Shillong where this entire community policing projects were discussed and these uh, villagers also participated and narrated their own stories. Project Prohori Suru Hone Se Pehle Irrigation Ka Jo Nala Tha उन लोग खराब हो गया था और इसका वजह से ज़्यादा खेती नहीं हो रहा था प्रोजेक्ट पूरी शुरू होने के बाद उन ड्रेन का सफाई कर कर दिया हुआ और जितना खराब था वो सब रिपेयरिंग कर दिया हुआ इसके वजह से पब्लिक को इरिगेशन सिस्टम से खेत में पानी लेने के लिए अच्छा सुविधा हुआ और इसके वजह से उन लोगों का काफ़ी मदद हुआ There is no financial implication at all for the police in uh, while conducting this um, project because we, we, we are acting as a facilitator only, we are acting as a change agent. We uh, just expose the villagers to the different developmental agencies and credit institutions 
And uh, we have, uh, there is no scope for us to spend money at all because it's a direct one-to-one -one connection with, uh, between the villagers and uh, other organizations and associations. So uh, we have no financial implication at all from the police budget. There were some government policies, government schemes, etc., which were there earlier. But this was a new experience for them that especially police people have come to help them in a different way altogether. So his response from the entire village, especially ladies, were great. And that's why they have come so forward. Project Prahari, with the supporting and catalytic role played by a highly motivated state police for furtherance of community policing, has brought new hopes to the communities in several villages, which had been facing the scourge of crimes, terrorism and social isolation for ages. Project Ashwas, the assurance. The representative child in Assam today is a shell-shocked and frightened entity, bereft of opportunity to bloom in an atmosphere of freedom, laughter and gaiety. In areas where terrorist activities were maximum, the children had to suffer a lot. They saw incidents with their own eyes, fathers being killed, sisters being killed, and they had suffered a trauma. And this was really very sad. And to cope with this problem, our high ups department started thinking about doing something and Project Aswas was sent to this place. Secessionist activities, separatist movement and ethnic conflict coupled with actions of the state to counter them have created a situation which has impaired the very foundation of the future generation. We had come across children who had lost their parents, either of the parents, who have seen violence happening right in front of their eyes of different kinds of violence. And a whole lot of families which were displaced, the children were all over and not really being cared for. And we are not aware of too many agencies doing special work in this particular front. So uh, it was felt that Assam Police could perhaps contribute its bit towards the cause of the children in general and those facing such experiences in particular. And accordingly, a meeting was called in the police headquarters. Assam Police, the vanguard to tackle the situation, could not address the scenario merely with conventional coercive policing. The hour had arrived to extend the baton with compassion, love and a human attitude so that our children may step into a world of normal childhood and receive opportunities to become responsible future citizens. It was with these objectives in mind that Ashwas, an Assam police project to help the child victims of violence in Assam was inaugurated. UNICEF, the harbinger of hope for children worldwide, came forward to work in this direction in Assam, along with the Assam police. A total number of 2,206 civilians were killed by different armed outfits in Assam during the last 10 years, while a total number of 1,173 militants were killed by security forces. During this time, 1,679 personnel belonging to police, paramilitary forces and the army also lost their lives. The children belonging to the families of all the above categories have been obviously deprived of a normal childhood. The decade-old violence has certainly affected health and family care in the rural areas. Training for the police personnel, we have selected National Institute of Public Cooperation and Child Development, a governmental undertaking situated in Guwahati itself, to conduct this training, a very specialized training for the police personnel to develop a community orientation and also to make them aware about the issues pertaining to children. We have uh, arranged for a whole lot of trainers who are given an initial training by a group, uh, expert group who we have brought from Delhi and then they in turn train this police personnel in National Institute of Public Cooperation and Child Development. We take the participants to expose them to the field situation to such institutions where 
the child victims of insurgency and violence are there. So they get an opportunity to exchange their views with them. Then also we used to arrange some sessions like uh, drama, like Guwahati Childline. That team comes and they play a they play just a skit, and after that, which is followed by discussions. This way, the role play, then video films, dramatization, institutional visits. These are some of the methods that we use in this training program. Schemes for direct assistance. A scheme to ensure direct assistance to the children of the victim families for their educational rehabilitation. National Foundation for Communal Harmony has been moved to extend financial assistance to the children of the victim families. Families belonging to below poverty line in whose households violent death has taken place during the last 10 years have been contacted by the local police stations and forms were filled up as per requirement of the foundation. Necessary documents like FIR of the incident, post-mortem report of the deceased, income certificate, death certificate, age certificates have been collected and families helped by police to get all papers in order. Local police then submit all such cases to the Ashwas team, which are forwarded to the foundation after checking records. Uh, this the scheme is being funded by National Foundation for Communal Harmony. Through this scheme, Project Aswas identifies the children of victim families in whose household there has been a violent death. In that family, the, each of the child is given rupees 600 per month for his or her educational rehabilitation. And this assistance is given till the child attains the age of 18. So rupees 600 per month he or she gets till he or she attains the age of 18. Uh, we have also engaged NGOs in different districts to keep a track on how this money is being utilized, whether the child is doing their studies properly or not. In order to carry on the, the assistance scheme, they have to give a school continuance certificate which we process in our headquarter and then we submit to National Foundation for Communal Harmony and the assistance is carried on like that. So far, 400 children all over the state of Assam had received this particular assistance. Sensitization campaign. Six sensitization campaigns are planned in a year. Ashwas has identified a cluster of seven villages in each of the six districts where there is a history of ethnic or terrorist violence. Seven such campaigns were already conducted in a group of villages, which are Rongya under Kahilipara district, Mazuli subdivisions under Jorhat district, Namru under Dibrugar district, Rupshi under Dubri district, Hachara under Sivsagar district, Singya Putni under Nogaon district, Sarfanguri under Kokrajar district. The finance for the entire training program is concerned is funded by UNICEF and is directly given to the National Institute of Public Cooperation and Child Development without, without us playing any role out there. Similarly, for sensitization campaign bit, the last year we had conducted six numbers of campaign uh, in different parts of the state of Assam. This we do it ourselves and we uh, spend the money, it's, it comes to about one and a half lakh rupees and in power campaign and we submit bills to the UNICEF, UNICEF audits it and then uh, reimburses whatever the money spent on this particular sensitization campaign. As far as the financial assistance scheme is concerned, it is the National Foundation for Communal Harmony which um, uh, sends the checks in the names of the victim families and they are uh, given away in their names in different banks and they draw uh, at a rate of rupees 600 per month. The entire year's money is given in their names in the different banks. Project Sahayog 
The northeastern states as a whole, and Assam in particular, has been beset with insurgency problems for the last two decades. Assam police has been fighting insurgency with commendable success, but it is still to traverse a long way to achieve its goal of a violence-free society. Critical and objective analysis of this phenomena has shown that unemployment coupled with economic backwardness is the root cause of insurgency. To address this problem and to prevent further exodus of the youth to the jungle, Assam police laid special emphasis on community orientation in policing, which culminated in its latest initiative named Project Sahayog, with a mission to march together towards a new dawn with active participation of the police and public. The project is undertaken by the Assam Police Battalions exclusively in close cooperation of the villagers that are chosen for implementation of the schemes undertaken. Our battalions are located in interior areas and uh, if we can somehow establish a contact with the boys and the villagers in the villages, then maybe we'll be able to make them aware of the opportunities that are created by the government for employment, but unknown to the villagers. And also, with our facilities available with us, we can train them up in certain self-employment schemes so that they can have some employment opportunities and can be weaned away from the extremist grasp. Objectives Motivating the youth of the village to rely on self-employment by actively participating in various developmental schemes of the government and non-government organizations. Formation of self-help groups amongst the village youths to derive benefits offered by financial institutions and for setting up economically viable projects based on locally available resources. Actively associating with the citizens in their interaction with various developmental agencies to improve the overall economic, social and cultural scenario. Participating in awareness programs on health hazard and the best ways to lead a healthy life. Bring the police and the public closer with a view to curb crime. Prevent the children from dropping out from schools. Monitoring the performance of the self-help groups to ensure proper utilization of funds received from financial institutions to usher in a healthy economic growth. We have selected the schemes with a lot of thought about the forward linkages. Uh, those schemes which are self-sustainable in the villages that we have adopted, like poultry, piggery, plantation of uh, cash crops, and then uh, trees which uh, can give them some kind of income after a, a lapse of a particular time frame, like five years, seven years, like that. And easy, available, easy demand for them is available, like uh, trees which are used by the match factories, then bamboo plantation, like this, which are used by the factories available here, like paper factory and mass uh, companies, etc. And uh, we have also emphasized on tailoring, learning of tailoring, driving, motor mechanics, avenues for which are available in the villages or nearby towns. So this forward linkage part is a very important component of the entire scheme. And we have thought about it, and accordingly we have introduced introduce schemes.
From our side, there is no financial implication. People themselves identify their projects, that what is sustainable in the village, what resources are available in the village, and where is the market available, it is, whether it is nearby. This kind of uh, exercise is done by them with, the, with our help. We have got small committees in the village which we have adopted. They identify these, village, uh, these uh, programs and schemes and they generate the resources by pulling their own resources together and then we show them that under what scheme they can get assistance from the banks or the development departments. That way financial involvement from our side is nil. <laughs> You see, there are uh, two surrendered alpha boys in this village. Uh, now, when this project is started, uh, now they are getting engagement and uh, and actually if I, when these boys went uh, to join Alpha, I asked them uh, why they went, they told that there is no other uh, works to do and there is no money also to do something. So it's better they went and joined the organization. Now somehow these two boys have come back and getting engagement in these all sort of works, I think they will think twice or they won't ever go and join the organization again. If we can give them some economic viable project, so they will be engaged, they, they, won't, they, they no longer will be attracted towards jungle and they will devote themselves for their own economic development. Results achieved motivated the villagers and unemployed youths to rely on self-employment. Enthusiastic response of the villagers and unemployed youths for growth-oriented schemes like pig farm, poultry farm, beekeeping, goat rearing, duckery, plantation of bananas, commercially valuable trees, muga farm, tailoring, embroidery, motor mechanics, carpentry, weaving center, etc. Participation of the public in maintenance of peace and communal harmony in the locality with the police. You see, effort has to be from police and also from the people, but police must take the initiative. Without uh, initiative from our side, we will not be able to uh, get uh, proper response from the people. There is an understanding in the people at the grassroots level I am sure at one time this will be self-sustainable, people will change, police will change and uh, will definitely turn into a people's police. The Assam police has set an example of how policemen can go beyond their conventional work culture which can ideally be replicated in any part of the country. The Assam Police Social Action Programs have continued to grow from strength to strength, thus setting an example for every state to implement the same in their own social settings.